Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at how we can take renders from beginner level to advanced in Enscape. So, if you're a beginner, most of your settings are probably set to default, therefore your visual settings won't be optimized to get the most realistic look. If you want to follow the video while implementing these tips, you can find the SketchUp source file from the link in the description. So, to start off, one of the biggest flaws that the default Enscape settings have is that the sun intensity is set very high. Most of the time, if I am not using an HDRI, I use a sun brightness of from 7 to 15%. I believe that that is the most natural range of sun intensity that we experience in our day-to-day -day life. Therefore, it really makes sense that it would make the scene much more realistic. The intensity of the sun can be sometimes more or less depending on what HDRI I'm using. Uh, if you're not familiar with HDRI images, they're basically panoramic images that can be used in 3D software to act as a light source for your scene, and it helps to create a very natural lighting effect. If you're wondering where you can get HDRIs, I will leave a link in the description where you can get plenty of them for free, uh, and if you want the same one that I'm using, it will be included in the same link as the source file. So, as you can see, we can add the HDRI right here in the visual settings. So to add it, we just go to Sky, click Skybox, and then load it up. Uh, as you can notice immediately, uh, the sky and the lighting look much more realistic than the default Enscape sky. To make it look even more realistic, we're going to make the brightest point act in the image as the sun direction. Uh, with the rotation bar, we can change the direction of the sun as well as the setting of the background, which also serves great to hide the horizon line as well. I'm going to leave the rotation at 0 degrees since I like the reflection on the roof and I believe that that is the best spot that fits the best with the scene. Next up, we're going to take a look at the field of view and the two-point perspective. So, as you can see, as of now, the rendering window is set at one point perspective. With this kind of perspective, the elements that are set to the side of the composition are going to be distorted. This in fact is how we see buildings in real life, but architectural photos are not taken with this kind of perspective since it tends to deform the buildings. If we change the perspective to two points view, you'll be able to notice that the vertical lines are now set straight and in 90 degrees. This makes a huge difference and maybe the impact is not as big in our project as it would be in interior design or in taller buildings. I will go ahead and put some examples on the screen to showcase better to you so you get the idea. The field of view angle depends on the kind of project that you're working on. If you've ever noticed, interior real estate images usually have a wider angle of view. Uh, which could be used to make the space look larger as well as to capture as much elements as possible. But of course, we wouldn't want to go ahead and over exaggerate it. A more narrow field of view would be considered at 60 degrees and a wider one at 100 degrees. But there's some rare cases where angles outside of that range could be used. In our project, we're going to use a field of view of 8 degrees, which I believe fits very well and covers the important elements of the scene and the view that we have going on. This next one is a mistake that I myself used to make as a beginner as well, and I still see a lot of new users make this error. For instance, the row of bushes on the bottom right here, you can see that each one of them is facing the same way. And from this angle, they look identical and artificially put. As you've noticed, in real life, plants are not identical in any way with each other. Therefore, to make the landscape look more realistic, we change the angle in each one of them and change the scale between them a little bit so that it don't look repetitive. This process is usually referred in the industry as randomization. The same principle could be applied in many different areas and in its core is just an addition of imperfections into the render. The effect here is, does not seem as big as it would have been in a project where there would be more repetition of elements, but you get the idea. Before we move on to the next one, if you found this video helpful so far, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I will upload a lot more videos like this exploring different areas of architecture, so make sure you stay tuned for that. This next one is more regarding the composition and the balance for renders in general. This is another mistake of mine as a beginner. 
With all the vegetation and the asset library that Enscape offers, it is normal to get excited as a beginner and to go ahead and use all those ready to use objects. But the truth is, we don't want to overuse them. It is very important to leave room for the building to breathe and to give the viewers of the render a clear indication of what the main subject of matter is. Maybe this one is not very uh, dedicated to Enscape, this is more general, but I think it's very valuable to incorporate this in our renders. So as you can see, if we take off a lot of the vegetation, people and vehicles that we were using, the view now looks much cleaner and in my opinion overall better. So to go ahead and see the final results, we're just going to turn off the shadows a little bit so there's not a huge amount of contrast. We'll turn up the saturation and the color temperature to make the image more vibrant and a little cool. We're going to go ahead and tone down the shadow sharpness and then we're good to go. So this is it for the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit the like button as well as subscribe. Feel free to comment regarding any questions you might have and I'll see you in the next one.